Good evening and welcome to the Truth Report. Today we have a fantastic guest back with us, Phil Haney, formerly of Homeland Security at its founding some 20 years ago. Before that, a Middle Eastern expert for some 20 years. He is the expert to talk to on domestic Islamic terror, which is why we have him today. I want to remind everybody before we get started, you can go to our website, americantruthproject.org, where you can sign up to get all of our stuff always for free every day in your mailbox. Or a new thing at ATP, if you want to get it on your phone, all you have to do is text TRUTH to 88202, TRUTH to 88202, text it, you'll get signed up that way, and from now on, you'll get the stuff on your phone for free. So let's get started. Phil Haney, welcome to the Truth Report. Thank you, friends. Glad to be here. Uh, it's great to have you. You're such an expert. It's an honor to have you. Today, we're going to talk about your primary level of interest and expertise, which is the infiltration of the United States by radical Islamists. Their goal, as we all know within the community, is the implementation of Sharia law and the flag of the caliphate over the White House someday, and they're not apologetic. That's what they're working for right inside our borders today. So let's get started. Phil, let's talk about the threat of Dioban Islam within the United States. Philosophically, pragmatically, who are these people? What do they believe? The Deoband branch of Islam comes from a city in India, north central India, by the name of Deoband. It was an Islamic revival movement that started in the 1860s as a response to the presence of the British, the British Empire. Back when India was all of Pakistan and Kashmir and Bangladesh and modern India, that was the greater India. Of course, it was overseen by the British Empire. And just like the Muslim Brotherhood created a revival movement in Egypt in 1928, um, the Salafi Deobandi began in 1860s and formed an alliance with the Wahhabi Saudi Arabians, probably discovered during Hajj time, made a coalition together. The Saudis began funding the madrasas, the schools that the boys and some girls go to, which has continued up to this day between 40 and 50,000 salt and peppered across the whole Indian subcontinent. The Deobandi branch of Islam has many... Let me, let me stop you. There's 40 or 50,000 what across India? Madrasas, schools. You mean there's 50,000 separate locations teaching strict Sharia application over life? Yes. Oh, my God. That's, that's the source of, all the, of the, uh, the fighters, but not just the fighters, also the imams. And also, not just the imams, but the, they're called qadis, or sheikhs, of Sharia law. Only a few of them will become uh, uh, imams, and only a few proportion will become the specialists in Sharia law. The vast majority of them are trained from the time they're boys on the, the uh, ideology and theology of jihad. They're, they're ready to go. And that's an almost endless roster of fighters that stream into the different battlefields, which lately has been Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and so on. So the Deobandi branch of Islam is a Salafi, which means back to the original, for a branch of Sunni Islam, and their whole goal for existence is implementation of Sharia law. So now you fast forward and let's name some of the groups that are part of this big branch of Islam called Deobandi. One of them is Tabligi Jamaat. Tabligi Jamaat means the party of promoters. There are 75 to 125 million members of Tabligi Jamaat in the world. Just that group. 
Then another one is Lash Kataiba, and we know about that because of the Mumbai massacre. That is an organization, Deo Bandi, that is created and supported by Pakistan. And there's another one that we've all heard of that's part of the Deo Bandi movement too, called the Taliban. The Taliban are Deo Bandis. They are Pashtu Urdu speaking members of uh, the Deo branch, Deo Bandi branch of Islam from the Asian subcontinent. They're not Arab speaking from the Near East. And here's where it gets even bigger. The Near East groups that we know of, like ISIS and Hamas and so on, formed an alliance with the Central Asian groups, the Deo Bandi branch. And you know what it's called? Al Qaeda. It's, we call it that. It's actually known as the Global Jihad Front. That was the organization that was run by Osama bin Laden and Yusuf al Qard, and I mean, uh, Ayman al Zawahiri and three other sheikhs. They formed a coalition called the Global Jihad Front. Half of the organization that joined it were Arab speaking from the Near East, and the other half were from the Asian Indian subcontinent, Pashtu Urdu. The Deo Bandis have been involved since day one, before even 9 11 happened. And so, are they here? That's the starting point. Are they here in America? Yes, they are. We all saw them on the day that San Bernardino massacred, on December 2nd, 2015. Syed Farouk was a Deo Bandi, Tahiti Jamaat. And his wife, Tashfeen Malik, was also a member of Tabligi. Her father, was Pakistani, but he worked in Saudi Arabia. And the arrangement, the marriage between Tashfin and Said was arranged by the Imam of the mosque in San Bernardino and the family of Tashfin Malik. He was a, he himself, meaning Said, was a Hafiz. He had memorized the Quran. He wasn't just an average guy, he was a prodigy, but he was a member of the Tabligi Jamaat. So, also, Omar, Omar Mateen, is that the right name? The, uh, the Orlando shooting, the Pulse nightclub. His mosque, Islamic Center of Fort Pierce, was directly connected to the same network as the mosque in San Bernardino. And this is why I got in so much trouble when I was active duty. Because rather than these being random acts of violence with no connection to any kind of a group or ideology, it was just the opposite. These guys were part of a global network. Several other attacks that have happened or been attempted, starting clear in 2002, involved members of the Deobandi, especially Tabligi. Not just Al-Qaeda, as we keep hearing, also Deobandi. So yes... They're saturated into the structure of the Islamic community here in the United States. They're not as well known. They're almost invisible, but that doesn't mean that they don't exist. And that's basically the reason why I got in so much trouble. Bill, that is amazing stuff. We want to bring you back next week to continue the discussion. For all of you that have joined us today, I want you to go to americantruthproject.org or findberry.com, which takes you to American Truth Project on the web where you can sign up to get on our mailing list. It's always free. You'll receive our articles and videos on a daily basis. And our new service, by text messenger, send us TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, text it to 88202. You'll be on our text message list. And then you'll get our reports, including our Phil Haney insights, right on your cell phone. Again, thanks for joining us on the American Truth Project. We'll see you next time. I'm Gary Newsbaum.